CES was uh, first uh, sort of postulated by a guy named Rabinovich in 1914 in Russia. And then he wrote, a, and he was using it for insomnia. And then he wrote, a, he published a book called The Lecture Sleep in 1958. Um, and so it was used primarily for sleep. Uh, officially, though, now the FDA appro has approved it for anxiety, and, um, anxiety, pain, and depression, uh, and not for insomnia. Uh, and anyway, roughly 130 studies have been done since uh, his book was published. And using different parts of the brain, uh, shoulder, brain placements, and nowadays almost everyone uses the, their mastoid placements, their temporal lobe placements, frontal, but most, and all kinds of frequencies. Nowadays, almost everyone is pretty settled on most of the time using half hertz and 100 hertz, and ear lobes just because it's so nice and convenient, stimulating with the ear lobes. Um, and that's how things are settled a lot right now. Um, uh, basically, we'll say we're putting a small current across the cranium. It flows across the brain. It stimulates neurotransmitters. It may promote brainwave entrainment. It's difficult to tell because you can't run an EEG simultaneously, but you can see residuals coming off it when you shut it off, and, and those residuals have been seen. Uh, 100 hertz increases serotonin, used to release, in generally speaking, general terms, used to reduce anxiety and to improve sleep. Half hertz increases more endorphins and is used more for pain. That's a general rule of thumb, but it's not an absolute. It's pretty general. If a person doesn't like to use CES, pull out some really big ones, and they'll just be happy to use these. No trouble at all. Here are some of the studies that have been done. Alcohol, anxiety, ADD, palsy, uh, smoking, cocaine, <coughs> uh, cognitive issues, depression, fibromyalgia, headaches, heroin, learning. Methadone, pain, polysubstance abuse, in case one isn't good enough, insomnia, stress, and, and more drug studies. So there's been a lot of uh, studies done. Look at how many of them are done that are double blind, at least 35. I think, I think actually I found 45 when I did further analysis. A lot of double blind studies on CES. Uh, this is now Ray Smith's analysis, meta analysis of the whole situation. Look at insomnia, depression, anxiety, drug abstinence, and cognitive dysfunction. Number of studies, number of subjects in the studies, then he calculated an effect size for the whole thing, and it's pretty substantial and very, very easy to use. No side effects. Double blind, single blind studies for anxiety, for insomnia, uh, cognitive function. You can see a lot, most of the time they're doing double blind studies, or there's quite a few people in it. Um, this is a different type of co cognitive function or dysfunction with substance abuse. And this is interesting here, comparing this. This is Kirsch and uh, Galula's work comparing CES against antidepressants. Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, Effexor, Surazone, and Celexa. And you can see that uh, the proportional, of, uh, the actual treatment effect over placebo is, is rather insignificant with a lot of those meds, where it was very significant uh, with uh, uh, cranial electrostimulation. And this sort of shows an example here of improvements. And you can see CES much more effective at treating depression in a nice bar graph kind of way than meds are.